Hey everybody, welcome back to Survival Heights Season 2, a very special 3000 Days World Tour episode. As with all of these world tours, there is a world download in the, des in the description below. You're more than welcome to download the world, check it out for yourself, uh, and see all the things that I'll be touring today. So, there's some things in my ender chest as well that I can go over a little bit. If you are curious, it's a common question that I get on these tours, especially people who try to download the world. Uh, inside of here, in my valuables box right here, there are some books here that are pretty useful. The biggest one being the, the nether cords. It has a bunch of coordinates to the different nether portals that go to different parts of this world. So if you are interested in downloading the world, just keep that in mind. But without further ado, folks, we've got a very, very large world to be touring here. Let's go ahead, get it underway. So it only makes sense to start this tour where everything first began. You can tell by the pillar right here, this is where the world first started. And this is actually the exact block that I spawned in, which is pretty cool. I was able to record that, re record that or record the spot on the very first day, which is pretty awesome. But as you can tell, there's not a whole lot in this particular area. I added another portal here more recently, uh, just so we can get easy access back and forth to the nether and to this particular spot. Inside of here, this is where I dug into the side of the mountain on the first night. So we head down here, you'll see my first chest with some first items in here, my first crafting bench. Actually, my starter house has quite a few little things in it as well that I've gone ahead and named, which I'll show a little bit later that are from my first day. So I'm going to try to make my way down to the more important things that higher up here and then we can head down into the area down there. I'm sure you guys are very curious what all those buildings are for. So first things first, one of the first things I built in this world was this mob farm over here. It's a pretty simple mob farm has a couple of different platforms. Very, very simple design. I still have yet to decorate this in this world. It's one of the first things that I, I built in the world and it supplied a lot of great gunpowder and other materials and still does for our, our work throughout the world here. So you can see the storage system here. Most of these storage systems that you'll see, at least the automatic ones, are Impulse SV designs. Just gonna go ahead and say that. It's one of the best storage system designs out there and all these years later, it still works. So yep, you'll see I have some various spots here and there. There's a spot for gunpowder, which I use the most, bones, arrows, different things you get from a mob drop. Oh, and there is a portal here as well. That's a pretty common theme throughout this place. On the right over here, we've got a cute little cactus build that I built more recently, as well as a tree build there. Those are part of my Twitch stream redemptions. Um, people can get an Easter egg in this world. So you'll, you'll see some of those here and there. This is my desert mining area, right? My sand mining area. So. A pretty pretty cool area there before we head over to the the thing over there let's actually touch base on the top of this mountain here so this mountain is central to this whole location like i said it's the actual place where we spawned in is right down there got a little pagoda thing temple whatever you want to call it over here this is normally where i chop down trees uh, i believe this was another easter egg as well yes it was and i think it looks pretty cool the idea for the top of this base you can see an outline here but there's going to be uh, some sort of castle fort design here. I've had this laid out for a couple years now and I want to get to it at some point, but we'll get to it eventually. Over here is where I typically mine my trees. But the most important part about this, if we head over here, you'll see Snippy the Sniffer over there as we are currently in 1.20.2, just FYI. You'll see a little bit of a drop right here, which goes into a bigger build, but I'll take you through the other entrance because I think that it's going to be a little easier for most people to get to. So into this, what should be a tower, you can go down into the staircase. We have a shulker box unloader. Now that might give you a hint as to what's down here. We have ourselves a huge, huge, huge storage system. So the biggest part of this storage system obviously is the chests. So we have, we have three layers here. We have two bulk storage layers and then the very bottom layer um, is an individual item sort. It's a Tango Tech design. Top two are Impulse SV designs, bottom is a Tango Tech design. So uh, I'm slowly filling in a lot of these areas. This storage room is still technically not complete in terms of, I can't just put every item into the shulker box unloader and have it act automatically sorted, but we are quickly getting there. Um, the first two layers here are actually pretty much done. It's just the bottom layer with all of the individual items that have to get sorted here. So you'll see some of these signs here. This is where we have some, some empty barrels, but some of these that don't have signs, they aren't empty. Um, every single one of these slots has to be filled in order for the storage system to work. So I'm slowly making some progress there. But yeah, there's supposed to be a glass fog effect here. I think with 1.20.2 and some of the some of the client side mods used for optimization and whatnot, uh, it looks a little funky right now, but it's supposed to be a glass fog effect through the, the bottom here as well. Um, I went with a theme here of deep slate and quartz. You'll see the similar theme throughout many things. 
in this part of the base. I think it's a really good combination. You can see some of it on the ceiling there as well. I think it's a really good combination and that's why I went with it. If we head up here though, we'll head to the second part of the area and the most, the newest part of this area, I think since the last tour, which is our farming hallway. So you'll see a couple different places. Um, we have different kinds of automatic farms here. It's in the spawn chunk, so it is running, should be running all the time anyways. But essentially we have sugarcane farms here. We have melon and pumpkin farms over here and then we have cactus farms over here. And what happens with these farms and the reason that I built them here, oh, and before I go any further, there is a, there's a beacon here, but there's also uh, some water down there. We actually, somewhere down here, have a, a, a ability to go and do some maintenance on part. Yeah, down here we have, we have, ooh, don't want to do that. We have a little maintenance hatch right here where I can access the redstone that goes to the farms. But essentially what happens here is we have all these different individual farms for bulk kind of items that I've been needing. Melons and pumpkins, sugar cane, um, as well as the cactus over here. And these get automatically fed into the storage system here. That's why I put them here. So you'll see over on this side, we have cactus here. We have sugar cane here. And we have melons and pumpkins over here. And there's a little water stream that, that helps us out, but essentially it all goes through one one hopper stream or one one, one set of hoppers that then flows through an, an item elevator and into this area. So pretty cool stuff. So I think if we make our way to the other side, I want to show you a small little build that I have. Uh, we've, we've got some more plans for things to add to this area, but over here I decided to make a little bit of an area here where we could, a little lookout area where I could sort of fly in and access the storage system from here as well. But of course, it's a lookout area to look out over our farming village, which we'll, which we'll tour in a little bit, our villager area down there as well, as well as the behemoth that is the Ocean Monument build, which we'll be heading to in just a second. So before I go to the Ocean Monument build, I want to cover what's down here. So down here is my New Year's resolution boards, and I've done this in every single single player world, hardcore or otherwise, that I've ever had. Um, oh, that also reminds me. Something that I should probably mention. So this is a hardcore world, which means one life, but this is also an amplified world. That's why you have, you see all the crazy terrain here. Uh, oh, that is not good. But essentially there, there's just a bunch of crazy terrain here because of the amplified world, world generation. Um, I highly recommend going back and checking out the first episode of this series. This world's been going for almost three years and it's uh, it's pretty cool to see how, how much progress we've made. But in that video, I talk about a little bit about amplified and hardcore. Um, and how to make those worlds if you guys don't know. I think most people out there do at this point. Amplified has been around for a very long time and so is Hardcore, but Amplified isn't nearly as popular. So uh, just wanted to, to, to state that as well as the fact that of course we have ourselves our New Year's resolution boards over here. And the reason I do this is I like to share either some numbers goals or otherwise just, just various different goals with you guys, the audience, um, and to see at the end of the year if I actually achieve them. So I know New Year's, New Year's resolutions aren't big for everyone, but uh, I gener genuinely think that that um, it's a good thing to have. It, it keeps me focused. It keeps me working towards something, and that's always good, especially for for a, a hobby like this. So yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and head to one of the better builds I feel like of this entire area, and that is the Ocean Monument build. So I built this quite a long time ago in this world. At this point, um, the idea behind this Ocean Monument build was essentially I wanted to dig out a lot of the area, dig it down to what used to be bedrock. Now it's a whole bunch of deep slate, but it was pre 1.18 bedrock, I believe. Um, do a little glass fog effect dig out the area around this and then create a guardian farm. Cause I've never actually made a guardian farm before. So I thought th that this would be a really neat idea for that. So you'll see the nether portal here, the trident portal, kudos to Jen for giving me, giving me the idea. Uh, but essentially this basically a trident broke off and then goes into a portal here. You'll see various small floating islands here. There's a couple of Easter egg builds right there as well. Literally an egg build as an Easter egg right there. There's not really much in there. I think there, there, there's a couple cows in there as well. Um, miniature floating islands here and there. And then we get to the major part and the main part of all this, which is the ocean monument. So the design for the guardian farm is mine. Uh, I used some videos to kind of get an idea of how spawning worked. And it definitely isn't a super efficient farm. Um, it's not an XP farm. It's literally just for the guardian drops. But essentially the way that this farm works, you have multiple different bubble column uh, sections here where the guardians can spawn. Um, because their bubble columns, they'll spawn, they'll go up. They have, there's some water streams that, f that flow into the middle here and they drop down and die due, due to fall damage on the way down, which is pretty cool. The other thing that this uh, th that this build does as well is you'll kind of see some of these barrels on the outside here. And what this is meant for is the YouTube series. So I have a series based upon this world as well. And what's meant to do is ca capture a comment of the video. So I, I like to take a comment from the previous video, 
um, and talk about it in the next video and sort of highlight it as a almost a thank you, uh, but just as, as a way to interact with with you all in, in the audience as well. So you can see some of the more recent episodes here only on episode 30. So not not too far along. <laughs> but yeah, if we if we jump down here all the way down here, you can see the kill chamber. There's actually a little bit of glass here where uh, hopefully you'll be able to see some guardians dropping down. There aren't any dropping down right now. And then all the items filter into here. So pretty cool. I I think this is also an impulse SV. <laughs> Probably an impulse order. That I, it's been a little bit, so I don't quite remember. But that's that's the most likely case I would say. So that is the bulk of the backside of the base, I believe. Um, I'm trying to think if I have forgotten anything so far. We do need to go to sleep so that no mobs destroy us. But the major parts of the base aren't even in this back section. These are just a, a few individual parts of the base. The major part of the base is down here, and that is the farming village. So one of the things that I like to do in every single player world that I make, hardcore or otherwise, is I like to have a, some villages going on. Um, I like the idea of having multiple villages, possibly with real villagers in them, and connecting them up. So this is my attempt at the first one for this world. So before we even get to the farming village, before we actually get into the farming village, uh, you'll see that it's kind of divided in half here. You'll see the, the crop fields here and the actual farming village there. I never talked about this thing. So this is my original starter house. So if we go into here, um, I built this out up on this hill with the idea of having some treasures over here, the top floor being my bed, um, and the bottom section here being storage. I don't use the storage anymore. I've already gone ahead and using my bulk storage, but it's still down here for, well, for old time's sake. Over on the side here though, you'll see my first set of iron armor, uh, an extra set of netherite armor, my first bow that I had to retire because it's an infinity bow and I couldn't repair it anymore. My first crafting table. Well, I guess this is my first crafting table. I don't know what's over in the in, in the other area. <laughs> first pickaxe, first weapon, first furnace as well. So uh, dragon egg just kind of sits here. Uh, no one's going to hit the dragon egg except for me. So why not just keep it here? We might make a monument for it at some point. First enchantment setup here as well. Our first bed, our, our first brewing sandwich. I actually still use to this day. It's one of those things on my to-do list that I, need, that I need to get done in this world. A few barrels to store some things. Our first furnace is here, or the first our furnace array that we used. So yeah, nothing too special here, but this was my starter house and it was a lot of fun. Head down the pathway here through the water drop into the tunnels. This is the theme that we went with for the majority of the farming area here. So you'll see a lot of granite, you'll see a lot of bricks, oak and azalea leaves. You'll see hay bales. You'll see this kind of pathway uh, with the path blocks, the coarse dirt and the podzel here. And you'll see tons and tons and tons of crops. My nickname to some people is Farmer Fire because of the number of crop fields that I make. And this world is no exception. So you will see all kinds of crops. You'll see the sheep pen. You'll see a giant cow pen down there as well. You'll see the altar to Steve, Steve Jr. Praise Steve Jr the one and only Cal. The story behind this is, of course, this is season two, as you may have already uh, guessed from, if you've looked, looked at the world download or looked at some of the episodes from this series, this is season two of Hardcore for me. Season one, we had a cow named Steve that we that we worshiped, so continued Steve's legacy with Steve Jr. here. So sitting on, on his golden throne, absolutely loving it. One of the other things that I love to build is these giant portals. I don't think this one is the maximum portal size that you can make in vanilla Minecraft, but it's pretty close. So that's one of the things that I want to want to continue to expand upon in this world are these giant portals. I think they're they're a lot of fun to make, and they just work really well with Amplified, obviously with the with the crazy terrain. So oh, we've got ourselves a pig pen over here, I believe, um, and then another early thing that I have forgot to mention at this point, which is if we head down here, we head to the left, you'll start to see some cobblestone leaves, lanterns. This leads to my original, original, the OG of OGs. Uh, starter area. So before I even had my starter house, I came down here and this is kind of where I spent a lot of my first nights after coming off of the hillside. So there's a mine down there. There's a bed here, some first furnaces, uh, storage. This is actually my first enchantment setup, I think here. Um, I always forget that this is here, which is why I tend to say that the things in my starter house are the first things because I always forget that the storage is down here, but it is here. It's an ode to an earlier day in the world. Um, and I just like still having it there. So I kind of forget about it though. So with those portions out of the way, you can see a starter sugarcane farm I had there before I had the major sugarcane farms I have now. I just never got rid of it. Through here, you can see our farming village. So I, I did my best to do a villager wall here or a village wall here. Um, it's made out of oak and spruce or oak and birch, which are the main woods that are used in this village. So 
yeah, a lot of these house designs are pretty similar, if not the same. <laughs> There's different variants of one another, but I try to fill up the space as much as possible just because, I mean, if you look at how how we're coming into this village, it makes this face, this place feel so much more alive. The more details you add, the more builds you add, the more alive uh, these villages become. So we can sort of walk through here, walk through the paths a little bit uh, in the center here as well. It's where I have one of my newer beacons that I got recently after building it with a skeleton farm, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, and this is a, a wall design that I came up with, which I think is not too not too shabby. Again, another one of the tunnels that we've that you've already seen before, same basic design as was around the starter house. And more village houses this way. There's a path that goes through there. There's a path that comes this way. You'll see various leftover crafting tables and a bunch of fun stuff. Oh yeah, the dirt shack. Can't forget the absolutely wonderful dirt shack that has absolutely nothing in it. Because <laughs> why not? Every world's got to have a, a dirt hut, right? If your world doesn't have a dirt hut, you need one. Now we get to one of the major parts of this entire village, which is the quarry. So I never built a quarry before. and I wanted a very aesthetic mine that I could use moving forward. We dug this by hand all the way down to the new bedrock. So it goes down to one negative, almost negative 60, whatever the new bedrock level is. I always forget because <laughs> it's not zero anymore. We have ourselves a windy staircase. We decorate it with what at the time were some of the newer blocks. So stuff from the dripstone cave, stuff from the, from the um, lush caverns, lush cave. And I think it turned out pretty well. I think this is pretty cool. You'll, you'll see some donkeys. You'll see little horses along the way as well. Um, and then, yeah, I think it, I think it turned out pretty well. There's a, there's a water drop at the very bottom down there. You'll see various holes where I can do some, some branch mining. The idea behind this quarry was to dig this whole area out, right? But I still wanted to be able to do branch mining or have different levels throughout the quarry where I could actually branch off and do branch mining. And that's the idea behind this. So you'll see, I think there's a branch mine right there. There's another branch mine all the way down at the bottom and there's various ones throughout it. And yeah, turned out pretty well. Various horse stables and donkey stables to fit with the theme as well. There's a pathway that goes out the back there to where our original starter cave was that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Over this way, you'll see, I think this was, this was another Easter egg, Fallout's Flora. It's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice build there. And yeah, I've generally tried to add some trees here and there just to help with the aesthetic of this whole place. Like I said, the vibes, the feels of a world or of a village in Minecraft are everything. So. Uh, definitely whenever you have an, whenever you have opportunities to add details absolutely do it um but that is the farming village now we can head over to some of the other there's a easter egg there there is the twitch partner check mark and the two for my two-year twitch partner anniversary i've been a twitch partner for two and a half years now i think if you head over here though got ourselves a very important build and that is the villager breeder oh before i forget iron farm <laughs> What reminded me of that is that the villager breeder is a, is a logical geek boy design and the iron farm is a logical geek geek boy design. So uh, yeah, this world is powered by logic. A lot of you guys already, uh, a lot of you guys already know that, but I love his designs and his, his simple Minecraft tutorials are always a pleasure and the builds themselves are very useful for the kind of world that I run. I don't need a ton of materials. I just need the simple farms uh, that get me enough materials for my day-to-day -day work here. Yep, you'll see the iron farm here. You can see the design over on the side. I won't I won't explain it in detail, but this has provided us a lot of iron. And the villager breeder is the same. It's an infinite villager breeder. So you can see some villagers. We accidentally bred too many villagers before shutting this off. And so I have some leftover villagers, but essentially, what happens with this villager breeder, got a little build here. The villagers get bred. They go over into this water stream. Uh, I can use a minecart here to push them up onto this track. The track goes this way, down the track and into a kind of manual way of getting the one emerald trade. So I have a zombie in here. He's got, he's got a block, he's got a helmet. Um, and this is my way of having individual areas where whenever the villagers pass through here, the zombie turns them into zombie villagers. I can then send them into individual areas here where they are protected until um, they can be cured. Uh, and then once they are cured, I can send them back over here, back over here to be cured again, and so on and so forth until we have the one emerald trade, which is pretty cool. Which is what we have down in the villager trading hall. So you'll see behind me, I have a villager trading hall in the side. So when I first spawned into this world, this is one of the first things I saw. And that was this weird overhang. So this middle section here, I think, was either only partially here or I built out a lot of it. But I saw this overhang here and I said, you know what? That would be perfect for a villager trading hall. I can kind of just fly in, uh, talk to whatever villagers I need to trade with them and then fly out. And I use vines to get up and down between all the different levels as well. And 
it's worked out very well. I've got every kind of villager that you could possibly want in terms of trading anyways. They're all, they all have level one, level one trades. Um, there's a number of them that are masters now. I don't have all the villagers as master villagers, but that's mainly because I haven't traded with certain ones that I haven't really needed yet. So you have librarians over here. Um, I think the cartographers are down there, the farmers. These are the main ones that I use over here. And you have the masons here. I use these for stone quite a bit. I get tons and tons of stones. So I like to trade those for emeralds. We've got clerics. We've got, like I said, any villager that you could possibly think of that you want to trade with. This villager trading all has, which is pretty cool. And it's been very, very useful uh, to get all the book trades and all, all different kinds of materials. Instead of having to go mine for certain things, I can kind of just trade for it, which is pretty cool. That's really it for the main base area here. I don't think there's anything else that is important around here. So we're going to move on with oh, the skeleton. Hi, buddy. We're going to move on to the other dimensions in the other areas that I've worked with here. There aren't really many builds in other places, like the main over overworld builds, uh, they are already over here in this whole area. I kind of I try to stay in the general location and makes flying between things and interacting and having farms running and whatnot much easier. But there are some things in the nether and there are some things in the end that I want to go over. So let's head over to our, to our nether portal over here. Let's go into the nether and let's start talking. So here is what our nether looks like. And if, you, and if you go through the portal that is right at our spawn location, which is the hilltop base, you'll come through here. And I've tried to cut, color coordinate some of these. So the white area here is really just where I first broke through the bedrock in order to get into the nether, from the nether on top of the bedrock so I can put all my portals here. This is the portal to the farming base. You'll see some portals that way. You'll see some portals that way. The, the, the blue is the main portals that I use for the main base area, essentially. Um, the cyan is just whatever portals are this direction. The orange are just whatever portals are that direction. Like I said, the white is just where I broke through. The important part, I think, about the, the nether ceiling here, you, you can probably already tell, but that's the ocean monument portal. That one is the mob farm right there. The important part over here is that I have a gold farm. And this is just a bit of a disclaimer. As of 1.20.2, this gold farm no longer, well, I, don't know. I thought it no longer worked. Does it still work? So the gold farm portion of it, I think does kind of work, but the uh, iron golem that's supposed to be here is now gone. So I don't know if the zombie pigmen can just now reach the iron golem and that's why the iron golem's gone or what happened. But yeah, we don't have an iron golem there, which means this gold farm doesn't even work in terms of, of an XP farm. This was a race works design, basically just AFK here. Um, or just stand right here and you can get a whole bunch of, uh, of XP generally. So at least the zombie pigmen still track over here and fall down, but it's more just a gold farm now than it is an XP farm until I get around to fixing it. If you guys download the world and you want to fix it, go for it. Um, but that's totally up to you guys and whatever you want to do. So before we travel down the cyan or orange paths, so let's take a trip down into the nether itself. Um, the reason I put my portals above the bedrock ceiling is because my initial spawn my portal was pretty bad and i'll show you why and i'll kind of kind of explain why whenever we head down here i know this is probably a little dizzying let me go down so we initially spawned our portal in a basalt delta and our portal was over here as you can tell i i essentially encapsulated it in cobblestone here and that's because we are right on the edge of a lava lake right here uh and it was a pretty bad yeah it was a pretty bad spawn because of that so i had to encase it and as soon as i got above the bedrock ceiling i went ahead and did that um, there aren't too many points of the nether that are super important to look at there is one more recent build which we'll get to in a little bit the main things that are pretty cool about this about this nether spawn are one we head all the way over here there is a bastion right here which was pretty cool whenever i first spawned in so i was able to to Go to a bastion pretty quickly. The second cool thing is we have yet another bastion right here. Multiple bastions within a pretty short radius. The third cool thing was this nether fortress over here, which I used pretty early on in the world to get my first skulls and my first my first withers. So uh, you'll still, you still see some things responding here. I've got a bunch of materials here that I'll have to pick up at some point, but I'm not too concerned with this. And I'll explain in just a minute why. But yeah, that's really it for like the main parts of the nether. Like I said, there's not a ton of other things except for I do have a wither skeleton farm that I've already built. I mentioned a little bit earlier, but we've got to fly a little ways away in order to get to that. So let me go ahead, head back. Oh my goodness. Uh, you are blocking my path, sir. 
you are going to have to skadoodle your boodle. Down the blue path here is the path you actually have to take. It's in the nether coordinates book, but essentially there is a another place where I broke bedrock to get down to the uh, different fortress that I'm using for my for my uh, with skeleton farm. So you have to kind of fly this way towards the blue path, but a little bit to the right until you get to this beacon area here. If we head down here, don't go through the portal. There's nothing good on the other side. So I wouldn't, I would not recommend going that way. If we go down into through the bedrock ceiling, we head down into this area, into another basalt delta, except this basalt delta has a nether fortress that's over lava. And this is where we built our wither skeleton farm. So the idea behind this wither skeleton farm being that it's not just a wither skeleton farm, but it's both a blaze farm and it's a zombie pigment farm. So we get gold from it, but we also get blaze rods from it occasionally as well, which is pretty cool. If I would go ahead and skadoodle down here, you can see where we have a storage system. Like I said, this is literally the most recent thing that we built in this world. We have a kill chamber here for the wither skeletons and other different mobs that fall down here. There's a staircase over to the side. Where we have a bunch of extra storage so anything with blaze rods to coal to bones to arrows to whatever else spawns through here we have storage for it all right so flying back to where the initial portals are at we only have a couple more locations to visit we still have the end to visit um, but i want to visit at least the portals of some of the other places that we have we don't necessarily have to go through them but i at least want to show you where they are so to the right we're gonna go with the cyan path um, I believe that there, this is the path that I went down to go generate new terrain for 1.20. In that section, I believe there are, uh, you are able to get to some cherry grove areas as well as a mangrove swamp. We're not going to head there though. The witch hut. So I didn't actually showcase this. Spawn is that way and the swamp literally right next to spawn had a witch hut, which I thought was pretty crazy. It's just one hut. It's not a quad witch hut or anything like that, but there's already one here, and this is initially what I wanted to do a perimeter project for. The thing I forgot to mention about the Wither Skeleton Farm is that that's going to turn into a perimeter project. I think it's going to be a really fun project, but this was meant to be the original project, and then I realized that the Wither Skeleton Farm was going to be a lot more useful to have a perimeter for than a witch farm right now. I, I don't necessarily need to do a witch farm perimeter right now, so I decided to prioritize that over this. I still want to do a perimeter for this, but we haven't even built the witch farm itself, so we definitely need to do that probably beforehand, sooner rather than later. So after Witch Hut, head along the Cyan path here. We only have one more portal that's actually connected up here. Um, and that is the Badlands Mesa area. I say Badlands as Mesa. I'm used to saying Mesa. I know the biome's actually Badlands now, but I'm old school and I like saying Mesa. There's there's a Mesa Badlands area through there uh, where I use, which I typically just use to mine out different areas uh, of different terracotta, stained clay, whatever. Um, so I have those materials for building. Over on the orange path, which is the much more interesting path. I say that, but there's only two portals here. So the first portal here is an ocean monument number two. That's the second ocean monument that I found that I defeated. Um, I think I got some sponges from there. So at least I made a portal because it made get, getting to that monument before I actually killed the elder, elder guardians that much easier. And then on the right hand side here, we have a mushroom island, which is fairly close to spawn, which is pretty cool. I love mushroom islands. Um, they look pretty cool in, in Amplified. Actually, we can step through here. I think that, that they look pretty cool in, in Amplified, so um, I like I like having a portal here just to look at it. Oh yeah, and it's nighttime, and it's a mushroom island, so nothing's gonna spawn here. Nice. Very nice. Um, and obviously, as with all the terrain around here, it goes without, it, it definitely goes without saying that Amplified amplifies the terrain and makes it look so much better, in my opinion, so um i think mushroom islands are no exception to that all right and that is all of the portals except for one i intentionally skipped one of the portals because it's the last thing that i wanted to go to and that is the end over here so luckily the end is on this path as well I mean, it wasn't finding the end portal actually wasn't as hard as i thought it was going to be it just took a long time especially with the amplified it's so hard to traverse the terrain without an elytra and you obviously need to go to the end before you can get an elytra. So I said through here, this is another project that I still have yet to work on, which is making this area look better. <laughs> the end portal room is not the best looking room. Obviously it's pretty old in comparison to other parts of this game. So yep, we've got our end portal here. Um, I try to block off a lot of the areas just so we don't have to worry about mobs whenever we come through here. But if we jump through, this is where we spawned in. Got a little uh, area here where I uh, staircase up to fight the dragon. We have, funny enough, um, I, I think I've forgotten to mention this before, but we fought all the dragons that we needed to in order to unlock all of the different uh, portals to different parts of the end. So if I ever wanted to make an end ring, 
I already got the portals there for it, which is pretty cool. But the most important part of this end island, to be honest, is over here, and that is our Enderman farm. Similar to the iron farm, this farm did break in 1.20.2. For those who don't know, I think I think it was 1.20.2, but it might have been a little bit earlier than that. Either there was a bug fix or something had changed where the mobs could reach further. <laughs> and so anything that was dependent upon mobs not being able to reach or being able to reach within a certain distance or not being able to reach past a certain distance, um, if the rule affected that in terms of if it changed the mob reach such that you had farms where mobs could now reach like an, a golem or an endermite in this case um then it broke those farms so i had to move my endermite back about a block that's all i had to do though for this farm i didn't have to change the design at all just had to move the endermite back a block and the enemy can still see it so this farm itself um just to go over it is was done by my friend gp um fellow afterlife member um, as well as just all around good guy and I, I really liked his design so I decided to use it for the enemy farm here. Same uh, different the same color palette as we've used for the farming base I wanted to extend that into the end and that's why you see the granite you see the brick you see the birch you see the oak you see the different leaves I want to extend that theme into the end here as well so uh, yeah pretty cool pretty cool enderman farm it works like a charm for us and always a pleasure to have. As we go through the tunnel you'll see the water over on the sides I wanted to make sure um, that Enderman couldn't teleport away from that farm. So uh, you'll see the tunnel, this tunnel area again, themed like the main base area with water surrounding it. And uh, I think it looks even pretty cool from, from the outside. Well, that's really it for this tour. Um, I think in the last 500 days since the previous tour, we've worked on the Wither Skeleton farm. We've done some area, some things with the, with the, with the main base in terms of the adding stuff to the farming village, as well as adding on to our storage area. And that's, that's really what, what we've done here. So that's it for the actual tour itself. There is one more thing I wanted to do, and uh, I feel like it's always really fun in these tours to do this, and that is look at my stats and look at the advancements. So we're gonna start off with the advancements. The main advancements here, I've com or the nether, let's actually start with the Minecraft advancements. So I've completed all of the actual Minecraft advancements, something that you would think given all the stuff that I've done, I think that that was pretty obvious. Nether advancements. So I've completed quite a few of these, but the ones I have not, um, I guess I haven't completed loot a chest in a bastion remnant. I have looted chests in a bastion remnant, but probably not without the hopper method. So you place a hopper beneath the chest and you just get the materials through there. So I've looted them, but I haven't actually opened a chest. A lodestone, haven't used. <laughs> uh, I haven't taken a shredder for a long ride. I don't know what a long ride means. Oh, on a lava lake in the overworld. Yeah, definitely not done that. Definitely have not done the furious cocktail. Um, and I've not rescued a ghast and brought it into the overworld. So the more challenging ones on here, I haven't done, but I've done pretty much every other advancement here. Adventure is a big one that I have not done very much in. <laughs> and some of these are newer to 1.20.2, as you can tell by the smithing, smithing style, craft a new look, craft a trimmed armor at a smithing table, which we can definitely do that at some point. Uh, we need this for apply these smithing ta templates at least once. Oh, wow. Yeah, we definitely have not done that. I haven't even made the chisel bookshelf, so we need to do that. Um, I haven't even been to the 1.19 stuff with the deep dark, so we haven't even gotten those. Uh, caves and cliffs. Not going to do that in this world, more than likely. Haven't done much with that either. Honey. Honey is one of those things. Bees are one of those things in this world I haven't gotten to, so I have not done anything with honey. Haven't really done much with pillagers and definitely haven't well, haven't really used a crossbow. I've shot it once, but that's about it. Haven't dealt with powdered snow. You can see some of the more recent stuff. This world was started in this world was started in 1.16. So some of the more recent stuff I haven't done. Make the meadows come alive with the sound of music from a jukebox. I didn't know you could do that, but cool. We are two biomes away from adventuring time. I don't know what those two biomes are. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out at some point. Um, I have had multiple times where I've tried to go and figure out those biomes and just haven't figured them out. Uh, strike a villager with lightning. I haven't done that one. Sniper duel, bulls, bullseye. There's, you may, if you go back in the video and into the storage room, you might see one of these target blocks in my storage room on the floor there. That is me trying to get this advancement. I still haven't got it yet, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll get it at some point. I've got, what is that? Eat more mobs I need to get for monsters hunted? Totems. Oh, so that is the other thing that I've never described in this video, and that is totems. So this is a no totem world. It essentially means that I don't use totems. Now, does that mean I'm not gonna make a raid farm or have totems at all? No, that's not what that means. And I definitely want a totem to complete this advancement. But what that means is that I don't wanna use totems in my world. I have nothing against people who use totems. I, I wanna say that flat out and make sure 
that there is no questions about that. Um, I have no problem with people using totems. Totems are a part of the game, and if they weren't, if they, if it was cheating to use a totem, Mojang wouldn't have it in the game. I feel like the game becomes more difficult for me um, when when totems are not involved. So because of that, I don't use totems. If other people want to use them, absolutely no issue doing it. I just don't use them. Haven't had it. Haven't had to do this one yet. Like I said, haven't even been to the deep dark for that. I haven't looked through a spyglass at a parrot, but I've looked through for other things. So we need to go to a jungle at some point and do that. Uh, trade with a villager at the build limit. That's an easy one to get for me. So we can definitely do that sooner rather than later. The end, I've done everything except for levitate up 50 blocks. And the husband trees is another one that I haven't done a whole lot with. Balanced diet, I don't eat very much. Uh, frogs, I haven't done anything with really. So we definitely have to need to do that. Haven't even seen goats. Like I said, with previous advancements a lot of these are just things i haven't done because they're newer or they're bees and i haven't done anything with bees really uh cats haven't done much with that axolotls haven't used in a fight before i have caught an axolotl before and then we have to do stuff with bees to get this so we're pretty far along on a lot of the advancements but uh you you'd think so in three thousand days right but there's still quite a few that we still need to go through and now let's talk statistics so the thing that everyone always wants to know at least I always want to know is the time played. So that's 27.73 days. So that's, if you take that times that by 24, that's going to get you the number of hours. It's at least 660 ish hours in the game. And you're welcome to pause the video and take a look at all these different statistics as well. If there's any statistic in particular you wanted to look at, you're more than welcome to pause. There's, there's so many stats here. I, I couldn't go through all these games quit being at 893 is actually kind of cool. Uh, that's a lot more than I thought it would have. And there's also been a lot of jumps. I like to like to jump a lot apparently. So there's some cool things here, but like I said, you're more than welcome to pause and take a look for yourself. Items. So I've mined 427,000 stone, all the digging I've done, both with the storage system, the quarry, uh, those are the main two. And so I, that's, that's why that's the most. Uh, sand is number two, because of all the sand I've had to mine to make glass and whatnot. Deep Slate, of course, from mining, netherrack, etc etc times broken i've broken a lot of shears and a lot of iron pickaxes early on so i've broken two brushes apparently that was pretty recent i don't think i've done that much of uh, the archaeology so i've crafted a bunch of spruce planks spruce planks are super easy to use and i use them a lot for making chests and whatnot so that's why that's number one black stained glass is pretty impressive i've used a lot of black stained glass in the storage room uh, as well as over at the ocean monument. So that is that is pretty cool to look at. Emeralds, I'm assuming that this is saying emerald blocks and not actual emeralds. If it's saying actual emeralds, it must be for me um, turning emerald blocks into emeralds. That must be what this is. And so on and so forth here. There's nothing here that looks particularly, that, that looks like it's particularly off. So times used, the other way pickaxe with all the, the digging I've done makes sense. Same with the shovel, same with the diamond pickaxe before I even had another right. Axe, I do a lot of chopping as well. Sand would have been from the Ocean Monument Project. Same with Black Sand Glass and the storage build. And stone. I don't know why I've used that much stone. Netherite hoe 25,000 times. That's all the crops that I've planting, it planted in this world. It's pretty insane how many crops that is. So picked up. I picked up a lot of stone, obviously. Cobblestone, sand, deep slate, all the things you would get from mining, as well as oak logs from chopping things down. And last but not least, I've dropped, not much, but I've dropped a bunch of netherrack. That's just bunch of netherrack that i haven't needed i've either thrown a fire um or just thrown over over a ledge into the void whatever it might be melons being up here is a little weird for times dropped uh i don't know why there's so many melons unless it's for me just crafting melon blocks out of our melons interesting stuff but anyways folks that is it that is it for the tour of this world if there's anything i missed or anything you want clarification on please leave me a comment down below i love seeing uh love seeing you guys' comments and any of the feedback that you have if there's anything that you hated about this tour that you say whitefire you need to fix this in future tours and in future videos please let me know that down in the comment section below and i'll do my best to keep it into account for the next world tour we generally do world tours every 500 uh 500 days here 500 minecraft days here uh so I don't know what the next one will be, but hopefully we'll, we will have made a lot of progress by then. But yeah, thanks for watching today, everyone. I really appreciate y'all watching. If you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. Um, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like. And like I said, leave a comment and tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Uh, and give me some general feedback. But yeah, anyways, folks, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.